Hi, my name is Axan and in this video I'll try to show you how to play Path of Exile in the shortest possible amount of time. Many of my friends, whom I have been showing this action RPG game to, have asked me about exactly how this game is played. Well, while the user interface is quite similar to the Diablo series and, in all fairness, most action RPGs, uh, the gameplay mechanics are quite different. So you start on this beach, lying uh, in water, and you always have a weapon near you, in this case it's a bow, it's over here, and uh, <clears throat> it doesn't show the bow, I have to press uh, Alt to show the item, but uh, this is uh, because in the options I have, uh, I have disabled to, I, I have enabled uh, to fill white items. You'll find more about that as you play the game. Anyway, uh, I'm getting my bow, and after that uh, I proceed and I talk to this guy and then you have to kill the, the zombie. Now that the zombie is dead, he drops a skill gem. It's a burning arrow skill gem. You pick it up by clicking on it and then you go to your inventory by pressing uh, I or whatever key you have assigned to it. And uh, <clears throat> in Path of Exile's active skills are uh, given as gems. Uh, gems earn experience, as you can see here, my gem has an experience of uh, 1 from a total of 70 to the next level. So, uh, gems uh, earn experience as uh, you do and uh, they uh, become stronger with uh, each level uh, they, they gain. Uh, how do you use these, gem these gems? Uh, you pick them up and you insert them into your uh, weapon. In this case I have a weapon with three sockets, a green, a red and a blue one. I add the green gem into the green socket. Uh, green gems are dexterity based gems, uh, red gems are strength based gems and blue gems are intelligence based. Uh, so this is pretty much about the active uh, skills. Uh, now let's talk a bit about the passive skills. This is the passive skill tree. It can be quite, um, quite uh, disorienting for uh, new players because it's uh, it's really really huge as you can see and um, <clears throat> this skill tree uh, is the same for all characters in the game however uh, it matters a lot where exactly in the tree you begin for example I'm a ranger and I am beginning in the lower right side of the tree which is a dexterity area however if you would be a templar for example you would uh, begin in the left top of the tree which is mostly an intelligence area and as a marauder, you begin in the <coughs> in the lower um, lower left part of the tree, which is a which is a strength area. The place where you begin in the tree is obviously determining a lot about uh, who you want to be in the game. However, Path of Exile does not impose any kind of any kind of restrictions. So, for example, I can be a ranger. Uh, which uh, is uh, very skilled at spellcasting. If I um, if I invest my skill points, for example, in a path which will take me to the intelligence tree, for example, I could invest a bit in intelligence here, then dexterity, dexterity, strength, uh, dexterity, intelligence, and then I can go up here on the path to the intelligence area. However, of course, there is a cost uh, of doing this which is uh, spending a lot of uh, a lot of skill points into these small nodes in order to get to the intelligence area it would be wiser for me to invest uh, my um, my skill points into these other nodes which would lead me to to keystones keystones are these uh, larger uh, larger um, larger icons in the tree which give you really really cool stuff you get the one passive skill point for this tree every every level. Obviously, since uh, this tree contains about 700 of uh, of nodes, uh, you will never you will never get to make you you'll never get to cover even 10% uh, of them because you usually end up level 65 or 70, and, and in that case you have about 79 skill points because you get three skill points for every for every difficulty you complete. Okay, so uh, let's start playing a bit. Learn a f learn a few more things about the game. Um, I'm gonna go and kill these guys and uh, take some damage as well, so I can uh, I can show you how the potions work. It's um, quite different from other games, from other action RPGs. Uh, potions in this game are um, 
are filling up as you kill monsters. So as you can see I just picked, uh, I picked up another small light flask and right now it's empty. But as you can see charges two, it says charges 2 of 21. That means that uh, it's about to fill up. Each drink uses 7 charges. Uh, I'm gonna drink uh, from my number 1 potion right now to heal myself up. And you will see that as I am traveling and killing monsters the potions will fill up. So I picked that the that green skill gem a few minutes ago and I put it in my bow and I it's automatically assigned to right click. So let's go and use the skill on some on some guys. Right, so this is the burning arrow right now. And um, this is a level progress bar over here. You can see how much uh, how much experience you have to gain in order to reach the next level. And I'm getting there slowly but surely. I'm out of mana now, so I'm gonna use I'm gonna hit number five, and my mana is going to fill up again. As you can see, my number three potion is already is already is already. Oh. Okay, these guys are hitting me quite hard here. Let's get out of here. It's not it's not wise to get uh, it's not wise to allow yourself to be surrounded since uh, obviously you can get a lot of damage especially with the ranger which is not exactly not exactly a uh, melee character. Although I have seen a lot of uh, a lot of uh, ranger builds which are based on melee weapons because really in Path of Exile you can um, you can really be inventive when you are uh, when you are building your character okay a shield I can wear a shield since uh, since my bow takes both of my hands really poor drops I don't I don't have uh, I don't have uh, a lot of items right now okay there's a barrel maybe I find something here oh and here huh, here comes Hila this is the boss which you have to kill uh, before you enter the before you enter the first town this uh, badass zombie over here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep my distance. Oh, all right. There's an armor over there. Actually, it's iron gauntlets. Let me get those and get, get my ass to safety. As you can see, I incinerated him right now. I fired an arrow which set him on fire. The burning arrows have, uh, have a chance to incinerate enemies. He looks really easy with the ranger. You, if you if you're really careful, he can't he can't even get close to you. Oh, he pulled up he pulled up his sword. All right, he's almost dead. Okay, so I got a few more items. Um, this is an unidentified item, so you can use scrolls of wisdom to identify it. Once you did that, you can wear it. As you can see now, I have the the plate vest on me. Same for the helmet, and I don't need the wand. So let's level up. We have a uh, one passive skill point available over here and it's time to invest that skill point in something. Obviously you have to start from uh, one of the four uh, points here and then you're gonna make your way to whatever you want obviously. Uh, this gives you a huge amount of flexibility for example in uh, in the Diablo, in Diablo 3 you can't, uh, you can't choose anything. You just uh, follow the path which the developers have prescribed for you. That may work for some people, but at least for me it's, uh, it's definitely a game breaker. And I, I didn't buy Diablo 3 and I will probably never ever buy it. But um, definitely in Path of Exile uh, you have uh, a huge amount of, uh, a huge amount of uh, customization available. For example, I can, um, I'll, I'll invest for now in um, in uh, attack speed over here because it's really important. Okay. 
and you can see your damage per second here with um, if you press the C key for the character you can uh, see uh, the damage per second which is made by your default attack and then by the by the burning arrow and once I invested in attack speed for a 6% increase you will see that my attack my attack my damage per second has increased uh, marginally but in in later stages it gets quite it gets quite important and obviously since I invested in attack speed now I will um, I will go to through this area for example I want to get perfect aim and hard pierce and deadly draw so I'll go and uh, follow the follow the path on the other hand I will also definitely go through here because I get a lot of attack speed over here so I will definitely want to go this way and one of my favorite um, keystones with the ranger is thick skin over here which gives an 18% increase in maximum life and to get that you also get another 6% and another 6% so in order to get here obviously I'll have to invest quite a few points and I will get there later and another direction I will go, I will go over here and I will get this iron grip keystone which is really really important it's, um, it applies the bonuses in, from strength to uh, ranged weapons so in order to get here I'll have to spend uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 skill points and since I'm here I will definitely take titanic might as well because it's a really large bonus to strength and it can be really useful because strength translates in life okay so um, about the strength and intelligence so Path of Exile is based on uh, three basic stats which is less than uh, than most games and initially I found that to be um, to be a bit uh, I, I thought it might be a bit uh, a bit too simple but it's actually it's actually really really well organized so you have intelligence which translates into mana and energy shield um, then you have strength which translates into life and melee damage with physical physical damage and then you have dexterity which translates into evasion and accuracy um, how do you calculate how, how are these things calculated I will show you a bit later uh, now another thing which is important to know um, as you can see I have here this plus sign uh, my burn my burning arrow gem has leveled up and as you can see it's experience 70 from 70 so I will click the plus sign and now my, my uh, burning arrow gem has moved on to level 2 and its uh, physical damage and uh, burning damage has increased alright so let's enter the town and this is the first town the shore encampment you find here your stash where you can store items I have uh, I have quite a few because I've been playing uh, I've been playing quite a lot and you can use all these items to craft things you can modify the number of sockets on uh, on an item for example with the jeweler orb with a chromatic orb you can change the colors of the socket that gets really important later on I will uh, I will show you about I will show you more things about that really soon <coughs> and you have um, NPC sellers where you can uh, purchase items and sell items uh, Path of Exile is quite different to normal games I will show you how in, uh, <coughs> in the way you sell and buy items um, now uh, Tarplay is going to give me a reward for killing uh, that huge zombie outside Hillock and I'm gonna go with Lightning Arrow which is a really nice skill um, unfortunately for me I don't have where to put this Lightning Arrow because I don't have any green socket, green socket free so I have to see what I can do about that let's uh, sell this stuff as you can see selling items doesn't give you money it just gives you various other items this is um, the way Path of Exile works it, uh, it makes do with the concept of gold which is really nice uh, really nice approach and for purchasing items again you have to barter various other items for example pretty much everything here costs uh, one scroll of wisdom or this one for example costs one orb of transmutation because this is a quiver a quiver is really good for a ranger I will buy it and let me see if I can buy something with a green socket so I can use my okay here it is a shabby jerkin I'll buy this one okay so now I can put my uh, green skill into this armor and I'll switch this armor with the one I have on myself and uh, the quiver I also put the quiver here 
and as you can see when I put the quiver, when I equip the quiver my damage increases a lot from 6.9 to 9.8 because the quiver adds cold damage uh, let me put this stuff back into my stash alright so let's talk a bit about uh, armor in Path of Exile as you can see uh, this armor has uh, 20 20 armor whereas this one has 20 evasion rating uh, evasion rating and armor are uh, complementary are complement each other so if you press the C uh, key again and you go to defense you will see uh, how much armor you have and how much estimated physical damage reduction that armor gives you it gives me 13% as you can see now that I increase my armor to 34 it gives me 26% however my chance to evade has dropped to 29 whereas when I put this other thing on it goes up to 35% uh, chance to evade means that uh, you can uh, completely dodge an attack so it, uh, it doesn't do any bit of damage to you while estimated physical damage reduction obviously uh, works in, um, if, if any attacks hits you uh, the amount of damage is uh, subtracted from the attack and you lose less life so it's quite nice to try to, I believe that it's quite nice to try to combine the two. However, let's go back to the passive skill tree and let me show you a really nice skill. For example, um, hold on a second, I'm hearing some steps over here. Monsters around. I'll just go in the corner. Okay, so you have um, over here, for example. Um, where are you? See, you have this... Uh, this keystone quite far from the from the place I'm starting but it's a really nice keystone iron reflexes converts all evasion rating to armor this uh, this could be interesting because uh, if you have 200 uh, evasion it will get into armor and you'll have uh, a lot of armor obviously there's quite a bit of controversy related to this uh, keystone and it might uh, it might get re-engineered in the next uh, patches or so but anyway you get the idea the keystones are really important to do a lot of uh, a lot of uh, combinations and really interesting builds based on uh, on them. Okay, so uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna log off and I'm gonna log in with uh, one of my other characters so I can show you some higher level stuff. Uh, a bit of a spoiler in here, this is the, the second city. I'm on the ruthless difficulty. Uh, the game right now has four difficulty levels it's um, it's normal, um, cruel, ruthless, and merciless. Merciless will go away when the open battle launches, when they will add the third act. Okay, so let's uh, let's see how a higher level character looks. My witch is uh, level 44, and as you can see here, I have uh, except life, I have something called shield. Some armors, like this one, for example, don't give. Uh, evasion rating or armor they give energy shield energy shield is pretty much like um, like an extra it's a, an extra layer of protection all damage that you take uh, gets uh, deducted from the shield and only then from the life with a big exception of a chaos damage which goes directly and eats directly from your life but there is um, again in the, in the in the skill tree there is this really interesting uh, really inst interesting keystone chaos inoculation which um, um, as you can see, it will reduce your life to one, but make you immune to chaos damage. So uh, you will not be you will not be killed by chaos damage, but uh, it really boosts your energy shield. I'm quite interested in doing this with one of my builds soon. But this build is quite different, as you can see. Uh, I'm nowhere near that, and this is because this build is a support character. I'm playing this with uh, in combination with a duelist character, which is a melee, and I've. I went uh, with minion instability, which makes my zombies explode when on low life. It's a it's a, it's a really really good um, really good summoner skill. And uh, I've uh, went with curses. I can my my curses last forever. And I can also um, I can also curse enemies uh, with two different curses. And yeah, this is pretty much how um, how my passive uh, skill tree looks at level 44. It's a purely intelligence build, no um, no unorthodox um, maneuvers. I do have a, a shadow which is blood magic, or I have a templar which uses a lot of melee instead of magic. But this is a uh, quite an old school character. 
All right. So let's start doing some damage over here. This is a um, lower, lower level area than my level. So it's quite easy for me to damage these guys. But um, I'm here to show you how to play, not how I die. And let's raise some zombies. I have quite the army right now because my, my zombie level is my zombie jam level is quite high. I'm using the fast storm. And now I'm I'm gonna curse them. As you can see I'm cursing them with two different curses. And let's use a bit of fire trap. These are some traps which when they hit them, yeah, when they go into them, they just blow up. You also obviously have a teleport skill with the, with the witch, the lightning teleport. It has a... It's, the longer you travel, the more you have to wait, but you can move while you wait for the teleport to occur. And um, let me show you a few other things about the inventory. So as I told you before, uh, hold on a second. Let me spawn myself some bodyguards. Okay, I should be fine now. Okay, so um, as I told you, <coughs> items, uh, gems are inserted into sockets on items. And uh, what's really interesting about this uh, this mechanism is that you have uh, <coughs> you have these connections which you can see between the sockets all my sockets are connected between themselves by um, okay these zombies are getting annoying I'm gonna I'm gonna jump back to town okay so um, as you can see the sockets are connected to each other and this becomes really important later in the game because you can, uh, you have these support gems. This is a support gem which gives you gives me two additional projectiles for uh, whatever other uh, relevant skill is connected to it. So if I'm connecting this to a to a cleave gem, for example, which is a sword gem, this will have no effect because you have you can have projectiles with a sword. However, I connected this to freezing pulse, fireball, and elemental proliferation. And because of this, all those all those skills are boosted by this gem. As you can see, when I add this gem over here, um, a letter shows up here, which indicates that uh, that skill is influenced by the support gem. See that uh, is that Y letter which shows up when I'm adding the adding the projectiles. And without the projectiles, my fireball looks like this. However, when I add the lesser multiple projectiles, it looks like this. And this is obviously a lot more a lot more dangerous than the first version. Obviously, there is a, there is a drawback. Uh, you lose 30% of the projectile damage. But as the, as the level of the gem increases, um, the, the amount of damage you lose will decrease and it will get better. Other things of interest are, for example, um, the Ray Zombie Gem. So I have this Ray Zombie Gem, which uh, which builds me up to three zombies. But as you can see, I have six, and that's mostly because I have Lord of the Dead here in the skill tree, which gives me one extra zombie. I also have this one, additional minions, which gives me another extra zombie. And I have this one over here, another additional minions for another extra zombie. So I have six zombies for this reason. Okay, so. Um, my extra my, my zombies gem is connected as you can see by two support gems. So I have a minion damage support gem and a minion life support gem. So my, my zombies have extra life and extra damage. They're really really strong zombies. So um, yeah basically the color of the sockets becomes really really important. So that's that is why you need to use chromatic orbs and jeweler orbs to configure your items to reforge the color of sockets in your items as well as the number of sockets on those items because it becomes really really important later in the game for example my firestorm here is really really boosted by a lot of nice uh, nice uh, nice uh, support gems I get added cold damage with it, I get increased duration and I get a chance to ignite 
So chance to ignite gives me gives the firestorm a higher chance of um, of setting the enemies on fire, while this one adds cold damage and this one increases the duration uh, of the firestorm. Normally the firestorm, uh, let's see, normally it takes it, it lasts for 1.2 seconds, but with this gem in, it lasts for uh, two seconds, and that's quite quite um, quite a big boost in the um, in the the time that the firestorm will have to kill enemies. So I can I can fire about three firestorms before the first one is uh, is uh, over. It's also really nice how you can um, how you can uh, direct your fire. For example, if you want to fire your um, your projectiles in a concentrated uh, pattern, you should uh, you should keep your mouse cursor away as away from you as possible. As you can see right now, the the fireballs are really close to each other. However, if you if you if you if you bring your mouse cursor closer, you will see that the distance between the fireballs increases, and you can you can fire in more directions at once. It's the same with the freezing pose, which by by default uh, is only one pose, but I can concentrate it in three at the same time, or I can do it like this. All right, so uh, I guess uh, this is pretty much this pretty much covers uh, the basics about the game. Uh, just uh, get into it and learn more.